Dear Young Monster is about somebody trying desperately to figure out who or what they are with limited resources and getting a bit lost along the way. <laughs> I really wanted to write something that was very specific to communicating like my experience as a trans person. It was kind of reaching for kind of really clear cut archetypes and iconography and imagery and there's such a like deep beautiful exploration and interpretation of horror and horror cinema through like a queer lens, through a marginalised lens. So it just felt really obvious to explore those things through kind of like monster characters. My first ever experience of Frankenstein full stop was we had to read it in school in like year seven or eight. And I thought it was rubbish. <laughs> I didn't like it. It doesn't matter whether you've seen Frankenstein, you sort of know that bit. Mm. Like that bit where the monster's on the slab and they start pulling all the levers and there's people and the people in the in the lab are watching on and everything all of the machines are like whirring and it raises and there's the storm overhead and the and the roof opens up and we all we all know we've all heard the the doctor going it's alive it's alive like we all know that bit and i think that's where the kind of like impulse of like oh everyone knows that bit i don't need to explain myself i don't need to explain that image because everyone knows it. So working off of that, that's kind of where this idea came from of using these visuals and this story as like a metaphor of feeling seen, heard, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so you started writing this thing when you were 21, you're now 27. And I think what's been really interesting thinking about staging it now and over the couple of iterations that we've like played within the script is that transness and how it's conceptualized and how it's spoken about and politics of the world in which we live has That's changed. changed. <laughs> yeah. It's really, really changed yeah. and it continues to change. And like transness as an existence experience, a state is always changing and is very fluid and for lots of people. When we went into kind of R&D this earlier, we had the kind of version of the script from before and it was really hard to come back and kind of go, how do I make this feel like it's rooted in the present? And my knee-jerk reaction was like, I don't feel hopeful anymore. And that felt really difficult. But I think actually going back through the process of like going back through the play and like finding the story again and finding the journey that this character goes on, like, I hope we've brought it back to that. I hope we've managed to find a way to land that hope in the present. There's like lots of uh, things that don't feel hopeful, but there's also loads of hopeful things like in the work and also in making the work now and putting the work on now, you know. Having the space to do it, being exactly. lucky to share it. That's really exciting. And I think one of the things that is really exciting about the script is its universality, not in terms of um, its transness necessarily to everyone's experience, but the experience of identity, of performativity of what you are and understanding what you are and growing into what you are those are things that are important and exciting for like all humans hopefully to experience and discover and explore and I think that's what it holds and that in that is its beauty I think it is hopeful yeah, yeah. I feel hopeful at the end <laughs> I feel hopeful now I feel hopeful now <laughs>